We're here today for our fourth workshop as part of our Small Farms Big Changes project with funding support from the New South Wales Government Environmental Trust. So we're here today at Summit Organics at Talgum Creek with uh, Rod and Tanya Bruin. The workshop today is on biological controls, uh, which was one of the topics that local farmers of the Tweed identified as a, a topic of high interest following a survey uh, we undertook uh, last year. So helping us today with the workshop is Jake from Biological Services. That's going to be uh, talking about the different elements of integrated pest management and some of the typical species that um, we're finding in market gardens and horticulture crops um, and the, the beneficials that we can be integrating into these systems. Uh, yeah, my name's Jake Byrne and I work for Biological Services. Uh, we're a company, we produce a, a wide range of biological controls, um, but we also uh, provide services, consulting for growers to help them get the most out of their beneficials. It doesn't always just include using biocontrols. We do recommend um, certain insecticides as long as they're specific and not broad spectrum insecticides. We've relied on chemistry for a very long time to control pests and the pests quickly build resistance so the chemicals become less effective over time. We're at the point now where there isn't much new chemistry coming on the market and the ones that we do have, um, there's a lot of resistance to them, or well, most of them. Also for our health, so if you're spraying with chemicals all the time, there are effects uh, you know, for the environment and for the people consuming them. So it's, it's part of a, um, an integrated program to control pests. We like to use a, a lot of biocontrols if we can. Integrated pest management includes three main aspects. So that's biological controls, so that could be releasing predatory mites or parasites even bacterial applications or, or fungus. Um, it also includes cultural aspects, so cleaning up weeds, not leaving old crops full of pests, um, choosing varieties which may be resistant to certain viruses and pests, and also chemicals. So there are times where, you know, to get the best results in the crop, you may have to use a chemical as well. Uh, we've got a really good website that has most of the beneficials listed. There are quite a few good field guides which are produced by the Department of Primary Industries in different states. So if you're growing brassicas, there's good ones from the Department of Primary Industries for brassicas, or it might be for cotton. Uh, various crops have, generally have field guides which will show you the good beneficials and the bad pests. So Rodney's main issue we identified at the time was aphids and diamondback moth in his brassicas. Aphids in uh, brassicas as well, but variety of crops. Um, I believe he'd tried um, using some beneficials in the past and had success with some and not with others. We started releasing aphidias, which is a, a parasitic wasp that lays its egg inside the aphid. Um, it's quite quick to get control and if you release them regularly you always have a population on your farm. Uh, we've also been releasing diadegma, which is another parasitic wasp and it controls diamondback moth in brassicas. So Rodney's been using that in his broccoli. We were able to find um, establishment very early of the parasitic wasps and then even you know a couple of months after he finished releasing we could still find them on the farm and doing a good job and that's one of the benefits to being organic is you will maintain a population of beneficials. If I came into a crop that was a, a conventional sprayed crop you very rarely find any beneficials around or if you've released them they don't usually stay around for a long time. We grow certified organic vegetables and a lot of variety which, which is really good for us because um, there's always something that grows um, successfully. You're not relying on that, that one crop. Uh, organic farming has been quite good for us. Um, we used to send to Sydney and Melbourne markets, but now mainly, all, well, all, not mainly, but everything is sold through four local markets. So we've cut out the middleman and financially it's a lot better for us. Yeah, so the Tweed Sustainable Agricultural Grant uh, we got was for release of um, predatory insects and also some of the funding was for uh, some Australian native shrubs to plant within the greenhouses to try and keep these predators uh, in, in the greenhouses after they'd solved the problems. We wanted them to hang around a bit longer. In the project, the, the 
two insects we chose were the uh, lady beetles and um, the predatory mites. And the, the predatory mites were for um, obviously the mites on uh, silver beet and strawberries. We're having terrible problems with them and, and having to spray quite regularly for them and nothing really seemed to be working once they got out of control. Um, but they were very successful. Uh, we did early releases at planting, quite a few releases. Every time we'd plant we'd do a new release and a second release on some of the, um, on everything as well. So uh, they worked really well. The lady beetles weren't quite as successful because we found that uh, the lady beetles worked but they were a little bit slow doing the job and then the, the uh, uh, aphids would come back a lot quicker and then the lady beetles would be behind again and they'd have to build, build up in numbers or we'd have to release more. So um, that wasn't as successful, but then we uh, met Jake from Biological Services and, and he got us onto these um, aphidias, which is a little predatory wasp, and they lay their eggs inside the aphids and they, they were extremely successful. Now we just get a release of those every two weeks and then if I get any uh, rise in numbers, I just let him know and then we just get a, another extra large batches sent up um, and that's yeah like I said it's been working really really well. It's been a real learning curve this as well because it's a, it's a new thing so you've got to learn to identify you know what the problem is and then you've got to keep an eye on the numbers and that's it's all new I'm, I'm not used to that but we're starting to get the hang of it and the one thing we have learnt is that if we get a little bit of an outbreak is to get onto it early. I can't stress how important it is. We've left it late a couple of times and then it's, they've almost blown out again, but we've got on top of them, you know, pretty quickly. And the other thing is that it's a good thing to rely on the advice of these, the, the two companies, Bugs for Bugs and um, Biological Services, because um, they're the experts, like they've been doing this a long time and, and their, their advice and it's, it's amazing, they, they, they find things pretty quickly out in the paddock.